Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and, and today I'm going to give you a, an update uh, at the moment there is a great uh, astronomical event that's happening in the UK and on the 9th of May between uh, 12 noon to about a good 7 hours or so to about 7 o'clock at night there's going to be a transit of Mercury a transit is a planet that crosses across the, the sun's disk and basically casting a shadow and you'll be able to see uh, Mercury as it moves across uh, the sun's uh, disk as it orbits now believe it or not it is a very rare event and this has only occurred since 99, uh, 2003 and 2006 and this is the first time there's been a transit for quite some time now I missed the transit of Venus which occurred in 2012 which was again a very rare event however uh, with the Mercury coming up I thought it was a good idea to give you an update on what is that happening and you don't want to miss this opportunity so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to locate uh, the transit of Mercury using uh, an awesome software called Stellarium and basically I'm going to show you how to uh, locate uh, Mercury and the Sun and so that you don't miss the opportunity so to locate the transit of Mercury I use a program called Stellarium which is an awesome software package which is easy to use it's very accurate and also it's a free download okay so you can download it for free and uh, if you locate with this website you can upload it from there so we click on Stellarium so we set the month and we then set the we then set the day okay so that's the day so basically now we want to set the we basically want to set the time and then we're going to set 12 12 so that's the time where it's going to happen 12 12 we then use the search window and we're going to find mercury so type in mercury and then mercury should be there okay we're going to zoom in and then you can just see now the disc of mercury appearing between 12 o'clock and onwards uh, you'll be able to see the planet dot across the sun's uh, disk okay and the good thing is about uh, observing it as well as uh, observing its shadow you'll be able to spot the sunspots as well on the disk of the sun we're using with, the, with your filter and your telescope and basically that's where it's going to start okay so as as we speed up the time okay if you speed up the time okay so like 14 14 I'm going to zoom in again again zooming in you can just pick out the disc now and as you can see it's very small okay it's a very small disc so again you're going to need a telescope to be able to spot pick it out you can use binoculars but it'll be very tiny okay so ideally you need to use a telescope for this. So now you're located the transit of Mercury. Now, as I've mentioned this before in my previous video guides, is that when you are observing or when you're taking pictures of the transit of Mercury or anything to do with the sun, you must use a solar filter. You do not want to damage your eyes. And observing the sun for any for any form of photography or any for visual you must use a solar filter please please do not use a telescope or use a binoculars or any optical accessories you're going to use to observe the sun you must use one of these a solar filter like this good quality uh, fits the equinox uh, 66 millimeter this is a 66 millimeter to 94 millimeter solar filter and this one's a very good one because it has a bar of film on it and it has three set screws 
and again it's so easy to clamp, uh, fit it you just clamp it on there like so okay that is well secured to when you're even doing any solo work it is very crucial that you will use that because if you don't use that you will, you, you will lose your eyesight and believe me the sun is very dangerous so please please when you're doing any work regarding the sun use a solar filter what no matter what you're going to do they don't cost much money and a solar filter like this costs between uh, 20 to about 100 pounds all right you get varying degree of uh, uh, different grades but they all work the same they are all safe to use but please when you're ordering a solar filter, do not buy a cheap one, buy a very good quality one. Or, please refer to my video guide on how to make a solar filter. You can actually make one yourself using border uh, film, uh, solar film. They cost between 20 to about 30 pounds for a sheet. And you can make one yourself. They don't cost much money. So again, a solar filter like this will give you many years of enjoyment as long as you protect it and look after it it will do it'll last a lifetime okay so please look after your solar filters they're equally as important and again when you use any filter make sure you check for any damages if it's damaged or punctured do not use that filter get a brand new filter or make a new filter but please never use a damaged uh, solar filter okay so that's also equally important and again it don't cost that much money to replace and please start ordering as well. Uh, I remember when the Transit of Venus came round, tried to order a solar filter. I was uh, literally shopping around everywhere. And you can buy these decent solar filters from good astro shops like Alto Astro, uh, Tring Astronomy, Telescope Service, and Robber Valley Optics. They're all good astro shops out there that'll, show you, that'll sell you good solar filters. And please get the right one that fits it. So again, first priority, get yourself one of those. Now, to observe or to photograph the transit of Mercury, you need a telescope to observe it. Because the plank is so tiny and it's so close to the sun, uh, using any optical devices, you might not be able to see it very well. And you can use a pair of binoculars to view it, but it's not recommended uh, and also if you are going to use binoculars this is equally as important to use solar filters as well for both ends so if you're going to use binoculars to view the transit of mercury please get solar filters for them okay for both sides never use any optical device without a solar filter so you can use binoculars to view it but it'd be so tiny and you might not be able to see it very well so I would recommend a good telescope like this, which is a 66mm refractor, it's Equinox here. Uh, you don't need a high aperture telescope to view it, okay? Uh, obviously higher aperture, better you're going to, uh, better the views and, and more crisp and more uh, in, uh, detail you're going to see. But however, you don't need an expensive telescope and believe it or not, I found that this one here, the uh, Skywatcher 80mm refractor, which is an Acromat, is also an ideal candidate for it. Okay, you can use a 60mm refractor, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a solar filter, that's fine. And this will be ample. You'll be able to get some great pictures uh, and great views from a scope like this. This is a, just an 80mm Acromat, and at roundabout F, F5. Okay. You're looking at a telescope of f between f5 to about f10 will be a decent sort of uh, image scale to uh, to be able to take uh, great pictures of Mercury or be able to view it. So you don't need an expensive telescope. And again, this setup here it's on a basic mount. You don't need an expensive mount. You just need a tripod, Altosimov mount like so. As long as it's sturdy, not wobbly, you're fine, completely fine. And you can take some great pictures, just a basic setup like this. Now, one word of warning. When you're using solar filter, 
make sure that you remove any other optical devices and that includes your finder scopes or your red dot finders because you do not want to be using any optical aiming devices whilst you're trying to image uh, or, or look at the transit of mercury okay so remove any optical devices because if you use that you will let one you're going to damage uh, the, the finder scope or the red dot finder okay because of the heat intensity of the sun is quite uh, hot you're going to melt uh, any plastic material or even crack any glass you don't want to blind your eyes and you can do an alternative here I have a finder scope like so with a solar filter so again you can use aiming devices as long as if they're protected it's completely fine okay and you can fit that as long as the, uh, the finder scopes are lined like so and then you just fit your solar fillers okay make sure they're secure and off you go it's, it's so simple so uh, if you're going to use any aiming devices again use a solar filter so when the event happens you're ready to go you've got your solar filter you've got your camera set up or, or an eyepiece or whatever you've got set up you want to avoid looking at the sun and to point the telescope you want to point at the sun in a general direction okay please don't look at it and what you're going to do is you basically look at the shadow okay you look at the shadow of the telescope all right and you want the telescope to be pointing uh, to the sun and you'll be able to see it, the shadow and as you look down okay looking at the shadow you'll be able to see uh, the once it's in line you'll be able to see the sun another top tip to do is if I disconnect the camera like so disconnect the eyepiece an alternative what you could do is if you remove the filter and then point the telescope okay not looking at the sun and if once you start getting brightness hitting the wall or hitting the floor okay you start to see a, a bright disc on there uh, basically the lights coming from and once you're happy you've got a, a, a like a bright light from the sun you basically put the filter back in okay nice and secure and then refit your camera or your eyepiece or whatever you're going to fit okay like so and you should be there if you're not quite there right you may have it in the camera you may have it in the eyepiece and you're not quite there don't worry is get yourself a towel or a sheet or a blanket okay because the sun's very bright again as you're looking down at the eyepiece or you're looking at the camera you don't want to be looking with the brightness of the sun okay in the way and using a a towel or a sheet like so okay you put it over your head it doesn't matter how ridiculous you're going to look end of the day you're going to you want to be able to see it and also you want to be able to uh, take pictures so again you put it over your head like so drape it across the telescope again avoid looking up at the sun and as you go down Moving the telescope in position, and there you go. You'll be able to observe it, and you're able to uh, take the pictures. So again, using a towel or or a blanket will be able to enhance your views better. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter if you look ridiculous. You won't be able to see it, and also give you a better view. So another top tip to remember. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look. At the camera settings what I would what I would do to set your camera for the transit of Mercury it is very similar as if you're taking pictures of the moon now if you refer that to my last video guide on setting on the moon uh, it's more or less the same process okay you just need to make sure you carefully aim the telescope uh, and the camera with the solar filter in a correct manner so you don't look at the Sun like before once you've got the 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 sun it's that's in the the camera or the or the eyepiece you basically set the camera to manual mode okay you set it to manual mode once you're on manual mode you can set uh, live view 
Like so, so when you're pointing the telescope and you're moving it about, you'll be able to uh, find uh, the, obviously the sun itself. Okay, so once you've got Mercury and the sun in view, you then focus the image like you do on the moon. Okay, so once you've got it nice and crisp, again, use the zoom button here to zoom in, okay, to ensure that once you're focused and you're nice and sharp, that's it. You zoom out and then what you do is you set the ISO and because the Sun and Mercury is very bright you you set the the ISO to 100 okay on the lowest ISO all right you do not need any high ISO and once you're focused you may wish to adjust the uh, the exposure time now because it's very bright you want to set the exposure time on a very low setting so one and four thousandths of a second to about two thousand one and two thousandth of a second okay so once you've got those settings like so it's more than adequate and again if you're taking shots of the transit of mercury again it's ideal that you use a uh, a remote handset okay so as you can operate the uh, shutter okay but ideally if you use a quick release cable it just makes your life of taking the shot just a little bit easier okay so that's the camera settings you don't need uh, advanced settings for this you just need ISO 100 uh, 1 and 2000 for the, or 1 and 4000 of a second and uh, in manual mode that's all you need as long as your image is focused okay you'll be able to take the great pictures of the the transit itself okay so that's the settings and uh, we'll move on next so now you're happy with the settings of your camera please uh, look forward to this great event please show your images we would love to see your images how you get on and uh, again good luck hope the weather's going to be great it's going to be an awesome event Please share your experiences to Astronomy for Beginners Facebook page and clear skies to all.